All right, so now we're streaming today. Uh, just trying this out. Haven't really tried uh, streaming this before. I'm gonna mute this. Um, yeah, just for the heck of it, I'm gonna try doing a Modern Infrastructure Wednesday stream, uh, live stream, and see what happens. So yeah, let's go. Uh, actually, gonna be covering the same topic as we did last week: gra serverless GraphQL API. But today we're gonna do a little bit differently. Uh, we're gonna use the same example that we used last time, the the Apollo Server example. But today we're going to mix up some languages. Um, so last time I kind of showed how callback functions work, callback factories work uh, in the node runtime. And so it was a very node specific uh, tutorial, but obviously a lot of Pulumi users use different languages, uh, Node, Python, uh, Go, and, and .NET. And so today we're going to be covering kind of how to mix those languages. And so, you know, how to write the, the, the serverless example still in Node, uh, where the function's in Node, but the infrastructure uh, program itself is in Python. And so, yeah, let's let's go ahead and do that. Um, and so, uh, we'll start with actually the example from last time. So this is the the Apollo Server example that we used last time, and and we copied and pasted this code, and we modified it to be callbacks um, in in what we did. So, but today we're actually going to change it up a little bit, so you can see our we have our environment set up here. We have kind of some some stuff going on here, but but really um, we're going to be trying to use uh, uh, instead the the program to be in uh, no, so we'll call this, uh, I don't know, we'll call this uh, GraphQL, we'll call this Graph, we'll call it API. Uh, and it, within API, we can actually, let's go there, and we can um, uh, just create this API package. Um, and uh, let's fix this up, and we can actually delete we need this license, for example, or author. Uh, don't need any of this. And um, we're also going to actually run the npm command that's recommended by this. So we'll do this. It's pretty interesting. I've never done this uh, live stream uh, stuff before, so it should be pretty interesting. Let me increase the font size on this. So, okay, so. Um, We've got this running. If this ran, great. Now we'll create this, uh, as suggested, this index.js, and we'll put the contents of uh, this file in here. So this is this is the function we want to deploy. Okay, and now, um, really, like this this thing is ready. Like this is ready to go. This has this has all the stuff we need for the function to work. So what, all we have to do here now is actually to deploy. Uh, this function. So let's try that. So we have a bucket actually already from our previous uh, just uh, template. So we'll actually create the uh, function uh, source asset. And so this is this is a bucket object representing the zip of um, actually the the function. So uh, we'll call this uh, you know uh, API uh, bucket object, and this is a storage uh, bucket object. And we'll call it, you know, uh, API zip. Um, and the uh, bucket, oops, is going to be the previous bucket we just created. Uh, it's the name of this bucket. And then the uh, source is going to be the uh, API that we just created. So it'll be uh, Pulumi, and we're going to create an archive. So asset archive um, uh, and here we'll just stick um, is this you can see is a dictionary of the of, of what we want the things to be so it'll be um, what we actually want is here we want a uh, just like the current directory like what's there to be um, and we actually need to uh, import let me see I remember where asset comes from. I think it's from Pulumi import asset, if I recall correctly. Yes. Um, and we'll make a file archive, and that'll be uh, of uh, API. Okay, so let's make sure this works first. Okay. 
And so while that's running, let's also uh, start thinking about how we're going to make the function. So we'll call this API func. Okay, great, that worked. And uh, this will be um, a, f a function, it's like, just like last time. And actually last time we did this in uh, Node, so we actually inlined the code, but here, uh, since we're using Python, we'll do something that's slightly different. So we have um, also need to import uh, Cloud Functions. Um, so this will be a function, and uh, we'll call it uh, API func. Let's, let's stick with the same quoting style. And we'll give it the source archive bucket, uh, and that'll be the uh, bucket name. And we can also give it the, uh, the source archive object, which we know from above, and that's the API bucket object, and that's the name of this object. So that's actually very straightforward. Um, and we have runtime, and that's uh, Python 37. Um, let's see, what else do we need? We need the entry point. And as we see from here, this is actually defined as handler. So we'll just call it handler. And yes, we want to trigger HTTP. Um, and I think we just give it an available memory and we'll say it's like 128. Um, and so that, that should actually give us the function we want. And then the last thing we need to do is actually, uh, just like last time, uh, give it a, an invoker. Um, so that we can actually uh, invoke the function um, from anywhere. And so we'll call this API invoker, and this will be a cloud functions uh, function IM member. Uh, API invoker. And just like last time, we have to give it the project. And this can actually just be um, the project of the, of the function. So it can be. Uh, and the region. And we can give it uh, the function. And then finally, uh, this is kind of a little bit of a, you know, just you have to know this. Uh, you can look it up in the, doc in the documentation, obviously, but we have to give it the invoker role. Um, and then uh, the, the members is, is, is all users. All right, so let's let's run this. I mean, actually, we let's not run that yet. Let's export uh, the URL from here so we can actually try invoking. It. So, um, export uh, endpoint, and we'll call this will be the uh, the the URL from the function. So it's API function, um, and we want uh, oops, we want this guy. All right, so now let's, and this should be Plumi export. So let's run that. Oops, I forgot to set the region. Um, uh, just So now we're going to create the function that's going to point to the uh, bucket object we actually already created earlier, I think. Uh, yep, so we created this earlier. This has the source of everything we had. Um, and then this creates the function. Then we have this ability to invoke it. And then we'll export this trigger URL. And uh, doing this live, so I actually haven't tested this before, but assuming this, this all works correctly, um, then it can actually just curl that, uh, that URL. And it should work just like last time, except the big difference is we actually didn't end up doing any of the um, the inlining of the function and, and kind of making it work as a as a as a callback factory. Instead, we just um, oh, file bit as define the function is not. Oh, oops, this is so silly. Why did I call this this the run? My runtime here is Python three seven, but here obviously we're using Node uh, JS. Let's say twelve. Uh, let me just look up the um, the GCP. Uh, functions runtimes um, so okay so node.js 10 so let's try that instead it 
So that's very silly of me to uh, think that the function was in Python when actually it's not. Let me just double check the uh, strings here. I hope I got that right, but we'll see. Yes, no JS10. Okay, great. So this time I should actually have it work correctly. And so really what we've done is uh, really followed the example here, um, but instead of you know deploying you know, manually the way it's kind of talking about here, we're just deploying with uh, Pulumi, where this is in our index.js, uh, and we're uploading this function exactly as is, um, and then we're going to trigger it um, by calling uh, via, via HTTP. And so we can actually, we should, once this uh, finishes uh, updating, uh, be able to execute our curl command uh, just like last time. So let me, while that's running, let me just, not sure why GCP is so slow today. Let me just make sure uh, everything else looks right. Didn't make any other mistakes. All right, so let's try our curl. Um, if I can see if I can find the old curl command head before. Oops, these are some. Okay, here we go. So we can actually just do this where we curl the stack output, and here the output is actually endpoint. And just like last time, we're going to give it the uh, GraphQL query of hello. And assuming it all worked, we get back hello world. So great success. Uh, yeah, that's actually really all I wanted to show today. Um, just kind of how all that works. Um, and yeah, hopefully this was a cool uh, way to do this. Uh, this is the first time trying at the live stream. So I will figure out whatever it takes to do to post-process this and have this posted as a video. Uh, but thanks for watching. Uh, please make sure you subscribe and like the channel, uh, or rather subscribe to the channel and like this video. Uh, and then also uh, please follow us on Twitter or hit me up directly at uh, LMZN. Thanks for watching. I'll see